That's I've been in records uh, most of my life, really. Uh, I started off as it was a hobby that became a job, basically. I was very lucky. I, uh, I left school at an early age. I wasn't scheduled to leave, and I wasn't. School wasn't that bad. I just, I just suddenly had this urge to get a job in records, and my parents, frankly, were very supportive, and it just went from there. Really. I started at the co-op across the road. When they had a big record bar, I still thought they'd in '68. Seven years later, I left and uh, had a job at Select Disc, uh, the legendary firm, often based around Nottingham. Although they had, they had places elsewhere, and uh, from then on, I had a couple of uh, fairly ordinary jobs. And then I, uh, a friend of mine, had a mail order business up on Regent Street, and I worked for him for a while. Uh, he was selling Northern Soul records through the post, basically. He was doing a list. We still got one or two calls coming up as well. And in 1979, and they specialised in jazz, funk and Northern Soul, but there was a big office operation upstairs, which is where I used to work. And after a month or two, they, were, they didn't really have too many records downstairs. It was the total opposite of what we are now. And they got a few staff as well. Business, uh, because the retail dropped a little bit. So me and one thing more got made redundant. Uh, I had a slight a, a temporary job around the corner of the arcade, in well, working for arcade records, just uh, just looking after a, an extra little shop they temporarily had selling second-hand records. I got a feel for it. I was doing Northern Soul records, but I had this idea, which is not my idea, it was just a bit of common sense really, thinking that what we really needed was some mainstream music, which people, everyday people wanted. They were selling specialist Northern Soul and what was jazz funk in those days, which was like a form of disco music. That was a big thing. And, uh, so I went scouring different areas, of, well not only in Nottingham, but I went all over the place. I, got a, I wasn't driving and I got a guy to take me around. <clears throat> we used to go to Sheffield, and Birmingham, uh, Brighton, London, looking at shops. Now what I was doing then, from my previous knowledge of in the record game, I was buying any, I was just buying singles, I was about LPs then. I was just looking for singles of anything I figured might sell. So put in the paper, and it worked quite well the first day. Nothing mega, but I was quite pleased with it. And that was a Friday, and the second day, Saturday, I think it took twice as much. So I was quite pleased with that. So self-employment had begun basically, and uh, that went on for a while. Uh, I think I was closing a little bit at the time, so I was still went out looking for records to buy really. And by this time, we got one or two people coming in asking us for certain records. I was getting the feel of what people wanted. And after a few months, my business was going up a little bit, and they seemed to be going down because they got the overheads of the shop and they got one or two staff and things. So I think they asked me if I wanted to take on the lease, which I did do. And it went from there, really. That was about 1980, late 1980, when I took the lease on. And we were selling essentially singles, and it was just when people would come and ask for a single they heard on the radio or at a, at a club, and I would either have them in stock or try and provide them. And it just went through there. CDs came in in the, well, they were in from the 80s, but from the early 90s, it was, it was as if CDs were going to take over. Uh, thankfully, we stuck with records, but I got a lot of stock then, of course, I had to, but we'd stuck with records and we're still selling some. I was in a situation where CDs uh, looked as if they were going to totally take over. I remember, I remember one of the days we came in here and we sold nothing in records and I really thought this is it. But uh, thankfully we carried on with records because there, still, and there always were people that still love the records. And uh, we did CDs, had quite a big selection of CDs that we still have. Um, they've gone down a bit now of course, in fact I'm just looking at them. We've 
prospects of reducing to 50p now, <laughs> so that's a kind of level on with CDs. And, uh, and it's just gone from there, really, and we just keep plodding on doing the same thing, really. Well, it's all been competition, not so much from bigger stores, it's all been all the second hand shops in Nottingham, as there always is, and still is. They've always been there, they've come and gone, I mean, I was competition originally for one or two shops that were there before me. It's always been a thing, you know, so uh, just part of business, really. You have to obviously see what, what it is and make sure they're not affecting your business too much. And you've got to keep an eye on the, on the ball, really, that's the thing, which you just don't know, really. It's looking very promising at the moment. I suppose when you think about it, I mean, a lot of people, me included, back in my early days, got a lot of pleasure out of playing with vinyl, of course. I suppose other generations have got pleasure out of flicking buttons on CDs, really. Uh, which I haven't got involved in at all, but uh, nothing against them. I mean, we sell them, and obviously they're very convenient, but... Uh, but... Uh, I hope so. It's good for us. I think, I think I've exaggerated a little bit. I mean, people talk as if vinyl is, is the... Uh, yeah, the big thing that everyone wants, which of course is okay, but it's a bit limited, there's only so many people collecting it. And there's a lot of new students around collecting it, I think that's a big thing, and younger people. And that's probably in turn, with publicity, got some older people to start again, so it's been a good thing for us, really. Well, I always say one motto I was had, as long as I keep selling it, I'll keep buying it. I shouldn't buy as much as I do buy it. <laughs> I should really call it a bit what I've got to, really. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. You just think, no, I'm going to sell it a lot. I was inviting bulk easily and cheaply sometimes, and you, uh, I always say it's good to buy it, it's a pleasure to buy a load of stuff, but then you've got to think where to put it and you've got to sort it yeah. out. The sorting out is a great, lovely job, but again, it takes a lot of time up and before you, well, it's always been the same with me, I mean, it just takes your life over, basically. From an early age, when I went into something, I went into it 100%. Um, I, mean, I had one of the usual hot interest before I got into records. I, mean, I think I was into bikes for a while, I think. And, um, uh, and bus spotting for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I got the ambition to be a bus conductor when I was very young. <laughs> but uh, cars, I think, when I was very, very young. That was probably the thing to know, you know, name every car on the road. But uh, I don't know, really, I've never thought about it. I mean, records for me is uh, it's a lovely game. It's a nostalgia game for me, really. I love the business side. I love the interest in it. I love the nostalgia side. And I don't go home and listen to records. I've got a record player. Um, I'm at the time, anyway, really. But uh, a lot of nostalgia it all brings, I think, and the nostalgia of dealing with stuff that I probably grew up on and sold originally and things that were slightly before my time of doing that. Well, it's nice, it's a great pleasure. It's great if you can find it. I mean, the problem is with us, really, these days, you can ask for, can ask for anything in, at any time. So, you, especially with singles, which I'm desperately trying to get some system with them again and get them on show, but uh, space and all the clutter is preventing us. I'm working on this, I mean, I'm putting in, in quite a bit of extra time at the moment, which I'll, I'll have done that anyway, but I'm, I was here till well, was 10 o'clock last night, and I had to go back and get some CDs to bring them down again, so. Um, uh, that's the problem, it's just finding the stuff really. Uh, I mean, you have to have a browsing mentality. We, it's nice to have things when somebody says, have you got so and so? And you can say, yes, it's here. Which, uh, to the next day, we used to be a lot that's in the old days, but it's just been an eclipse. Uh, I don't think I want to pass it on, to be honest. I've put, been too much blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> over yeah. the years. I mean, so much I love it. I mean, I've been through plenty of, let's say, blood, sweat, and tears over it, you can, as you can imagine, like any business. I mean, I've been through all the ups and downs and all the hassles and things, and still do a little bit, I mean, it's not, you never out of it. But, uh, I, I don't know really, I mean, thankfully I still enjoy it. I mean, I think the only problem is with this sort of thing, like any business, it does tie you down an awful lot. Um, you do, I mean, any shop, you've got to really be here. I mean, my main fault is I'm not as early as I should be in the mornings, but, uh, but, uh, you obviously got to be here. I mean, you can employ other people, but I mean, I wouldn't do that. It gets complicated, and also it uh, it's such a complex game, really, in the different genres and the different things. And I suppose I'm one of these people that like to know what I'm doing and like to maximise what I can do out of everything I've got. But uh, no, I don't want to do it. I didn't do this really. Um, no, really. 